All right, so now we're gonna go to the tomb a little bit because it's kind of an interesting little fact. The evidence we have thus far that we are, in fact, in this early middle woodland period, scalpels sharp on both sides, a prismatic blade, sometimes called a lamellar blade. It's really diagnostic of this period. You find them all over early, uh, earlier and uh, middle woodland sites. So that's a good indication that uh, we are hanging out where we are in terms of our timeline. Um, it says a, a, a cover, uh, copper covered curved retort. Say that 100 times fast. Um, now, copper covered implements. This is another kind of indication that we are where we need to be in terms of time. So there's a couple good examples. We have um, copper shaped implements that you see. Um, there's examples of them in Illinois, shaped like plummets, just shaped like crescents. I'm not quite sure. But there are also things where they're shaped like a grizzly bear tooth. They're effigy teeth. And there's a great example. Ball State has a great example. And I can't think of what the mound um, was it it came from. It may have been somewhere in Newcastle. But um, it has a, it's shaped just like a grizzly bear teeth. There's wood on the inside and there's copper covering it. So this is definitely not unheard of. And I think the copper is another indication that we're hanging out in this early middle woodland time period. So a couple, word, a couple words here about the stone grave part. So you think of a stone tomb, stone box tomb is stone box tomb. You know, you have this thing, but actually, in more cases than not, especially we see like in Illinois, you're looking at um, a partial mound actually constructed by limestone rocks. So if you see, this is a diagram from Brangenberg Mounds, not too far away, it's in southern Illinois. Um, you can see a nice heap of rock going on here. And this one here, this is actually rock standing perpendicular around the tomb area here. And this is an example of the same thing, except there's two of them um, side by side. So when we think of stone box grave, we might be thinking something more like this. And so when I think of something more like this, I think what it must have been like circa 1814 for the harmonists to go, I wonder what we should build with. What should we perhaps use? Not maybe knowing that there were burials involved. And this is certainly not the only case where this has happened. You have a lot of rocks. They might maybe didn't know um, that there were burials, um, but it certainly is pretty nifty. And it's, this makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, than, than vandalizing for vandalizing. I, I think that's a translation, but. All right, so the timeline, and I thought it would be kind of, for, uh, kind of fun to um, compare it with France since we're in Lesour. So just to kind of get us fixed in this early middle woodland time period, we've got France on the top, we've got um, Indiana here on the bottom, so we've got the Magdalenian, and I'm horrible like with French. If anybody here is really good at French prehistory, you can throw things at me. All right, so Magdalenian culture, the, um, Lascaux, the paintings at Lascaux, they're, they're doing their thing. Well, we have the Clovis culture here, some of the finest tools being made, really super thin. Clovis culture, it's here by, um, by about, definitely by 10,000 BC or so. So we're marching through time um, up in France, the megalithic culture, and we have the early, middle, and late archaic here. Here in Indiana, they're starting to use um, starchy seeds. They're starting to um, domesticate and really have a heightened dependence on um, native starchy seed plants. Um, like a kinopodium, uh, sumpweed, those kinds of things. So up there, we got uh, just about the same time, give or take a thousand years. <laughs> we have um, wheat makes it into France, so they're starting to use wheat. So we're moving on here. We, get, we start getting major earthworks, um, people starting to really think about using earthworks um, in the creation of their landscape by uh, about 500, 300 or five, to 500 BC or so. That tradition starts really picking up speed. And so right in here, about this time throughout the Midwest and in Indiana, we have many, many examples of, of earthworks and earthwork complexes um, throughout Indiana. Up in France, we have the Latin culture. If, you're a, a, if you really like um, Celtic history, this one's going to ring out a bell. So like the Latin um, culture in France, and then the Franks, and then the Hundred Years' War. And then after the mound complex, we get into the Mississippian culture um, with corn. So blah. So we're right here. Generally speaking, we are after the domestication of native starchy seeds, but before corn. And uh, what's really interesting about using France is that we could really no sooner talk about modern correlations with modern tribes here as they could in France, right? So if we were doing a, this history about the same time period in France, they really couldn't talk about which, which of those um, uh, Latin or, or early Celtic 
folks would, would be Irish or something. So it's an interesting correlation. So it's a fun one for France. So. And you've got to feel bad. Like we have this nice sprawling Mississippian culture here. And you've got the plague and stuff up here So in France. What are you going to do? All right. So that's where we're hanging out. Um, in this woodland period, we're going to be hanging between about the 500 BC period to um, about the 500, 800 AD period. So we took a look, after taking a look at Lesor, and we had a little bit more information with us, we then went back to the map. We went back to what we were doing and started thinking about where is it that we're going to dig? Where is it that we're going to put our test excavation? So this is the cemetery. This is basically the Harmonist Cemetery wall. We chose these two localities. Now, this is a big area, but we actually did just a small trench right up through here, real skinny, and a real small unit. We did not target the mound. We wanted to kind of get near it. So if, if you kind of get into right in the middle of something, it's actually kind of hard to see where you are. <laughs> so it's kind of good to get far away so you can clip the sides, so you can kind of see the development of it, um, so you can kind of see the forest for the trees, if it were. And you know, there's always a chance you could come up with something, and we really didn't want to do that. We really just wanted to test and see what the likelihood was. All right, so the first unit we placed, this is the one that was over here in the corner. Um, and the first unit that we placed, we thought, ah, this is really great. So you are looking at intact cultural features, and this was pretty exciting for us. This here is an actual, it's a trench wall, and there are posts, little small uh, indications that there are small posts placed um, within this trench, you can kind of see an outline of one right in through here. So the thinking of, uh, the thinking of this is that that is a trench um, with post in place, part of a, a structure. We're not quite sure what, but it is intact and it is there, and that's really important. There's another feature here too. You can see discoloration right in through here. Um, this is another feature, an intact feature. It's a good one, but I don't know what it is. The artifact density is about the same. The only thing I got going on is that there's a color change. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll figure it out, but I, I hope I figure it out. But, um, <laughs> but the artifact density is about the same. Um, so what could this potentially be? Um, we didn't excavate enough of it to really tell. It could be anything from a lean-to. We have that associated with earthwork complexes where you build something and then you kind of have a lean-to structure. It could be just one, one particular side of, of a house or a drying place or something. It could be any number of things. So, but that was interesting because what it showed us was that um, there is the possibility of having intact cultural deposits here in and, among, in and amongst all of the historic stuff going on. It makes historic stuff sound bad, but I don't mean to sound like that. But um, there's good uh, intact deposits. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of switch gears for a minute so we can focus on pottery. And this is a, a map, it's kind of a goofy map from Indiana DHPA, but it really serves a good purpose here. Um, uh, in the woodland period, early woodland period all the way through, you get this really great diversity of pottery and ceramic types, um, both in terms of how it was made. Some folks were incorporating things like grit or grog into the matrix as, as a temper, something that keeps it, um, keeps it strong during the firing process. And some folks were using different kinds of designs. But local, or regionally, you can see these differences and be able to compare different population groups. This is why archaeologists really love ceramics, because it allows you to connect dots in a way that says, I'm related to them, and I'm related to them. And this is really important for what we came up with at New Harmony. So you're up. <laughs> All right, so what was really interesting about this is the amount of early stuff going on. So this stuff were, um, is, you can see the funny texture here. It's actually a fabric impression or cord marking, and it could be that the uh, cording was made to look like fabric because they look about the same. It's like a tweed, um, and it's impressed onto the surface. And you can see over here, this has a lot of grit. They were using grit in the temper. Um, very thick, very friable, old, pretty old. This is pretty old stuff. This is more examples of the same thing. Um, this one's slightly thinner, this variety of it, but still we've got that cord or fabric impressed here. These are two nice rims. This is another one, a straight rim. This is a curved base. These two are really neat, particularly that, because some of the earliest ceramics that we have in the Midwest are flat-based. These here give an indication that we may be talking 
about some of the earlier types of pottery um, in the area circa the 600 BC mark. That's really early for ceramics. We don't have ceramics in the Midwest until sometime about 700 to about 1,000, not quite sure, BC. So this is really early stuff when you start talking about 600 BC for pottery. Very friable, very flat base, shaped like a, shaped like a pot. And something else found. This has, these has uh, nodes, there's impressions at the rim, and these have uh, zoning, still very thick, but they're different. They're decorated a little bit different. So these show that they're related to uh, another group. And this is an example of uh, the pot that it may have come, it may, the pot may have looked something like this, especially these two at the bottom. This particular tradition is recognized as a Havana. It's in Illinois. Um, the particular style is called Naples. So, but it has a strong Illinois connection. The other one, the earlier one, was uh, referred to as Crab Orchard. It's more um, southern Indiana, so we have a nice mix already of two traditions, two pottery-making traditions getting thrown into the mix. Go ahead. Um, points that were also found within that particular, now this is a great example, this is what we need to see. Scalpel-like, sharp on both sides. This is really, this is one of those neat things that you see with Middle Woodland sites. Um, earlier, early middle woodland sites. This is a prismatic blade or a lamellar blade. These are um, fragments of, of other ones, but you can see really thin, super, super thin. It's been thought maybe this is what you shaved with. These are sharp, very, very sharp. And um, up here is a nice point that you often see um, in association with these kind of ceramics. It's called an Aphanis Snyder's, um, Snyder's point. So this is kind of what you want to see. Everything's making sense for a nice earlier, earlier site. So this is a kind of the distribution of what we're talking about. Um, this is kind of where you see crab orchard. Um, crab orchard is really, really uh, more prominent down here in Illinois, but it really starts spreading up here into this area. And it's hard to pick out because the earlier ceramics are hard to tell from one another. Um, because the earlier, they're, they're all very friable. They all kind of have a, a grit pace. They all kind of look alike. So it becomes really difficult to see. But we have crab orchard here, very well represented in the unit that we excavated. And then we have a couple really great examples of Havana tradition stuff too, which is really kind of nifty. So the dates that we have and that we can kind of play around with um, are 300 BC to about 1 AD. And um, if we look at, at Havana, which comes in at about 150 BC to 1 AD, um, we see we have a nice spread, 300 BC, nice and early, but I think it might go back earlier. I think we have an earlier possible uh, use of the site going to about 600 AD, but I need a couple more shirts for that. But, okay. 